Hello, I'm Alex Gardner from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and today I'm going to show you how to access glacier velocity data that have been generated as part of NASA's Measures It's Live project. If you're interested in the project, I encourage you to go visit the website. It's um, its-live.jpl.nasa.gov. Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to access uh, uh, velocity data for all of the glaciers on Earth. And just quickly, I want to give a little bit of a background of what it is uh, and how we generate the data. So uh, the project generates the velocity data in the same way your eye does, and that is, is it tracks features through time. And so what it does is it takes two repeat images and it watches the features move slightly between the, the repeat acquisition of those images. And we can do that for any sort of imagery. So we do it for um, radar imagery and we do that for optical imagery. And we're applying these methods to the Landsat 8 mission, um, the Landsat, uh, sorry, Sentinel-2 A and B data, the Sentinel-1 A and B data. Soon we'll be uh, also applying this to the Landsat-9 data and also Landsat-7, 4, and 5. And so this it generates a really comprehensive record of ice flow through time, which helps us understand what the processes are that are driving changes in, in ice flow. Uh, but it also generates an absolutely huge data set on the order of multiple terabytes. And uh, the project has generated the data and stored them in a way on the cloud that makes it fairly easy to work with and access. And that's what I want to show you today. So how long does it take us to go from nothing to generating our first plot uh, that we could use in a publication? So I'm going to bring up a timer and we're going to see how long that would take and I'll guide you through that process. So let's start the timer and the first thing we have to do is we need to go to GitHub. So let's go to GitHub and we're going to search for the its underscore live uh, notebook and that's in nasa-jpl forward slash its live and that's our public facing uh, GitHub repository and in that we have a link to a binder and when we click on that link it initializes an instance on the cloud and it loads the environment that's needed to run uh, the notebook and it also gener gives you a, a Jupyter Lab uh, environment with which to play with the notebook and so none of this is running on your own computer it's all running uh, in binder and so let's uh, click on the only notebook that's there on the left hand side we'll double click on that and that opens up the notebook and so we have a little bit of information uh, an overview of the notebook um, how to set up a local environment in case you don't want to run this remotely and the first cell we need to run is to import the library so let's do that and that library is simply a, a, a Python script that sits right next to the data so if you want to go see what the, the code is that's, that's behind this just go and open that file and we're going to open up this widget and this mapping widget is an IPY leaflet and it allows mapping and we can um, find locations on the map and link that to the data. So I'm going to resize this window, but because of the way the widget works, you need to reinitialize it so that it fills the whole screen. Okay, and the first thing you'll notice is that we have glacier velocity for all of the glaciated regions. Uh, we can turn on and off those layers. Um, and then the second thing you'll notice is these little red boxes. Those little red boxes show us where we currently have um, data cubes. And because uh, this is, is still in the test phase of the project, uh, we only have data cubes over a few locations, but within a month or two, uh, these data cubes will occupy all glacialized regions on Earth, and you can click to your heart's content and um, uh, see what the data looks like for your region. So hopefully by the time you open up this video, um, all of these cells will be complete. Okay, so I'm going to navigate to um, the Malaspina Glacier, one of my favorites in Alaska, and as I start to navigate in, I find these blocks, the, these locations of the data cubes a little bit cumbersome so I'm actually going to turn off that layer and actually I find the velocity a little distracting too so I'm going to turn that off and so now we're just looking at the visible imagery and let's say I wanted to pick a location on the glacier let's say I want to pick this location right here and I want to see move it around a little bit if I didn't quite get in the right place I want, I want to have, include a running mean I want all the satellite data and this option will go away in the future because right now there's only a few cubes that have all satellite data but um, we have the Landsat 8 globally but um, pretty soon all the satellite data will be everywhere and we want to make a plot. So we click a plot and we don't see anything happen. So we go look at the logs window 
and it gives you information on what's happening. So it went, it opened the array, it extracted 30,000 points of data in five seconds, and then it went and created the plot. So let's go look at the plot. So we scroll down uh, in our window, and we can see the plot here. And you'll see that this is the velocity uh, for that point uh, right there. So you can resize this window if you want to make it smaller, and it will replot. Uh, you can make it bigger. And then if you scroll up, you see that there's a little save button here, and we can save that to disk. And we can open that. So now we have this plot of that location, and it shows us the seasonal variability through time of that point on the glacier. And we can see that in 2000, it started to surge. The amplitude doubled, then tripled in speed um, from its baseline rate. So there you go. There's your first usable plot that you could include in a publication. And that took us just under four minutes. Uh, which is pretty cool because behind the scenes, you know, you've gone and you've parsed through terabytes of data, you've found that exact location on the point of the Earth, and you've extracted 30,000 points of information on the speed of that glacier through time. So what else can we do with this notebook? So I'll close the timer now. I, I think I've shown you that we can quickly get from um, nothing to something uh, in under four minutes. So I am actually going to go to full screen if you look here for this um, widget on the side, so the map widget. And that allows me to navigate pretty easily. So I can go look around, scroll the glaciers, I can move these points, I can clear the points. But one of the other things I might want to do is I might want to say, well, what does it look like you know, at this point, but also compared to this point and compared to this point? Maybe I'll, I'll try and move them to find a center line or some other reason I'm moving them around. and. I'm going to include the running mean, and I'm going to make that plot again. And so I need to close this uh, full screen over here on the left. It drops back down into here. If we go look at our logs window, you can see it's extracting each of the points, and it lists those there, and our plot is made. And I can scroll over. And now, one of the things you'll notice is that we have multiple colored lines. And those multiple colored lines, so we have um, blue, orange and green correspond to the blue, orange and green shown on the map here. Uh, and so it's color coded by the point and you can do that for as many points as you want. Of course, the more points, the longer it would take to plot. And I can save that plot again. Okay. And now let's say I want to start changing things around. So I have the option of changing the variable. I could change that to a vx or a vy if I wanted the component velocities or any of the other variables that are contained in the data cube. And I'll show you how to find out what's contained in the data cube in a minute. I can change the maximum time separation between image pairs. So in this case, we are not plotting anything that has a longer time separation than 90 days. Uh, and the reason we do that is that allows us to show the seasonal cycle really well. But you could also imagine for areas um, where we're not as interested in that, you can increase the time separation all the way up to 565 days. And that al allows you to also plot uh, images that are really distant in time, the image pairs, which gives you a, like an annual average velocity. And then the other thing we can do is we can also plot by um, color by satellite instead of coloring by point. So I'm gonna do that now. So I'm gonna color by satellite. So this will make a plot where each individual point shows what data set it originated from. So I'm going to go back to the map. I'm going to open it in full screen. I'm going to clear the points. So we're going to start fresh. I'm going to zoom in. And I can pick any point I want. So I'm going to double click on this point here. And I'm going to go to Make Plot. And then I get out of full screen. And I look here at the log. And it went and made it. And I see that the colors didn't change. It looks very similar to before. And the reason for that is I forgot to reinitialize um, the, the velocity widget. So that was never passed on to the velocity widget. So I can update that. I can turn off the velocity mosaic and also the velocity coverage. The point uh, is in this location here. And we can just make the plot again. And so it's going to go out. It's going to fetch the data. It took about a second to get the data and it generates the plot again. And now you'll see that that update worked. So what we have here is we have um, Landsat 8 in green. We have the Landsat, uh, sorry, Sentinel-2 in blue. And we have the Sentinel-1 in red. And so that's the way to show uh, the variables, uh, sorry, the, the values by the data that they came from. 
Now the other thing we wanted to do is make this data really intuitive. And so the way this data sits on the cloud is in a czar data cube, which is cloud optimized, it allows you to quickly access the data. Um, and it easily maps into X-Array. So uh, in Python, um, you've, you've actually mapped the full data set that sits on the cloud as an X-Array. And you can see all of the detail of that data cube right in here. And so you could imagine if there's other ways you want to work with the data that's not how this notebook is designed, you can quickly develop your code to work with this data. You could make it loop through a shapefile and extract all of the individual points. Uh, you could load in full layers from the data cubes to generate maps or animations through times. There's lots of ways uh, you can explore the data, which will hopefully accelerate um, our, our understanding of uh, ice sheet and glacier processes, which is the goal of the It's Life project. So hopefully you found that helpful and you can use it in your research. Um, thank you very much.